this is a, a video about putting a library block in your As You Learn class. So from the library's homepage, I'm going to go to Services for Faculty and Instruction Program and Services, and we're talking about the As You Learn Code Generator. And this video is the video that we're watching, so if you forget, you can watch it and remind yourself. Uh, the first thing is, what is your class? I'm teaching US 1531. If you have a course section for a big thing like UCO 1200, you can add that. The next question is, do I want an app search box? And from the library's homepage, this is app search. It searches 50 of the library's databases. And it's good, especially for freshman and sophomore research. After that, they'll probably want to begin using the discipline specific databases. But for this class, you know, it's a lower level class and I do have an assignment for app search and I'm going to say yes. And I want that search box from right in within the class. The next thing is, do I want a research guide? I'm going to say no in this case, but you might have not know what a research guide is. From the library's homepage, these are library research guides and they can be broad by topic or they can be course specific. And the point of a library guide is to not overwhelm your students with absolutely everything that's available at the library. So for example, in this class, um, this is a, a middle class, middle level class, and these would be the databases. You know, you're not telling your students there's a million databases. You're saying use these two databases in this class and, you know, that helps your students. And, um, you know, you can link to things out like how, how you want your things cited. So library guides can be very useful. Or everything that's in a library guide, if you decide you want it within your course, we can, you know, put it right within your course. So um, I'm not going to include a research guide, but that's an option. I don't use course reserves, but if you do, it'll give you a link directly to your course reserves. This is not a distance education class, but if it is, if I was te teaching DE, let me open this in a new tab, it would include this tab about all the services, you know, we'll mail books to DE students' homes and that sort of thing. So, uh, but I'll say no, because it's not a DE class. And should it include a library chat box? And sure. So the, that means that they can chat from within the course, and if it's at 2 o'clock in the morning, they can leave us an email and we'll get back to them. So then I'll submit my selections. And I get this, yikes, uh, wall of code. But that's all it is. It's really, you don't need to understand it, you just need to copy it. So I'm going back into my uh, class. I'm going to turn, edit, editing is already on actually in this class. And so then I'll um, add a HTML block. That's the next stop, step. Add an HTML block. When you get the new HTML block, I'm going to click on the gear, give it a title like library resources or whatever you feel is appropriate. I'm going to click on the HTML button. I'm using Moodle version 2. In Moodle version 1, the HTML button looks like that. I'm going to paste my code and update, and there it is. Now I'll save the changes. And now I'll turn editing off so you can see what your students would see. So this is what it'll look like in your class. So now from within the class, say your students were, or, or one of your students is researching genetically modified foods. When you hit go, they'll get right into the library's resources on GMO foods, you know, articles. So that may be preferable to them just going out to Google. So from within your course, the only other thing I'll mention is sometimes when you go to add, um, I'm going to turn editing back on for just a minute, and this is just so it doesn't confuse anybody. Sometimes when you go to add a um, page, you'll see, and it's similar with the blocks, it depends on what your settings are in, uh, in Moodle, but you don't see any of this stuff. Okay. If, you, if you're not seeing any of that stuff when you go to add a block, you can just click here to show editing tools. And there you'll have 
you know, your HTML block or whatever you need. And, you know, you can resize these windows by that little handle there. So once again, that's the um, code generator and it's from the library's homepage, services for faculty, instruction program and services.